All right, I think we're live. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you might be tuning in from. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Elizabeth, and I work in the Kearney Center for International Student Services as the International mm -hmm. Recruitment and Retention Specialist. Yeah, and my name is Stephanie Gonzalez. I also work in the Kearney Center. I'm one of the assistant directors and work a lot with um, Beth on the orientation program. So we're excited. I hope you're watching out there um, and just look forward to your coming here. Um, so a few of the topics we want to discuss for today are um, about the visas because we know many students who are coming for the spring semester are still going through the process of applying for the visa um, and scheduling interviews. So we'll talk a little bit about best tips and practices for visas. Then we also will be discussing a few things about arriving mm -hmm. for orientation, um, how to get to Mankato, and also a little overview of what orientation will look like, um, plus a little bit of information about finding housing as you are preparing for your arrival as well. So anything yeah. else you think you want to cover for today? I think that's it for right now, but we'll be back again with more uh, info for yes. you. Yes, so this is your mini teaser as you are preparing for orientation, <laughs> yeah. but we are um, planning to schedule many more live sessions and webinars as you prepare for your arrival in January. Mm -hmm. So uh, to start, one of the things I want to mention, and hopefully it might work to share my screen, it might not, we'll see if this works. I don't think it's going to let me when I'm in the live, or live mm -hmm. mode. Okay. So it might not work. Um, one of the things that hopefully you have been receiving by email are the, the Know Before You Go series. If you've been accepted to MSU Mankato for January, you should be getting some pre-arrival messages from us. We have a series called Know Before You Go. And they are a series of interactive newsletters with tips about visa information, housing information, financial information, mm -hmm. um, orientation. Mm -hmm. So they are very, very helpful um, uh, pieces of information for you as you are preparing. So I definitely encourage you to read all of the emails that you are receiving from Minnesota State Mankato. Read through them multiple times. There's very helpful pieces of information. And if you have questions, of course, contact us by email or by phone. Um, and we are happy to help answer any additional questions you have. Mm -hmm. Um, but to start, we will start with some tips as you are applying for your visas. Um, hopefully, if you have been accepted, you have already requested your I-20. We ship I-20s to students for free. So if you have not yet received your I-20, please make sure to fill out the I-20 request form, which you should have also received by email. We just need your shipping information. And then we will send the I-20 to you as quickly as possible through express shipping. And once you receive your I-20, you can schedule your visa appointment. One of the important pieces you need to schedule your visa appointment is the CVIS number or CVIS ID from your I-20. The CVIS ID will be at the top right-hand corner of your I-20. And you'll use that to first pay for the CVIS fee, which is the $350 fee that you will pay to activate your I-20 for Minnesota State Mankato. Then you will keep a copy of that CVIS fee payment receipt and schedule your visa appointment at the nearest U.S. Embassy or consulate, wherever you may be located. Um, the cost to schedule the visa appointment is $160 U.S. dollars and you will complete the application through the U.S. Department of State website, through the visa website. And we um, also send that information to you by email along with your CVIS ID. So hopefully um, all that information is very clear as far as scheduling your appointment. Then as you're preparing for your appointment, it's important to gather all of the supporting documents that you need to bring with you to show to the consular officer. And one of the things that oftentimes surprises students is how short the interviews are with the consular <laughs> officers. Typically, most interviews are less than two minutes, um, but they can range from anywhere from two to five minutes. Usually they, they don't go over five minutes. So that's a very short time 
um, to share all of your information and answer the questions that the consular mm -hmm. officer has. So it's important to go very organized with all of your documents in order mm -hmm. so that you can quickly give those to the consular officer um, without feeling very rushed. So the documents that you will need to bring with you would include, of course, the I-20, the copy of your admission letter to Minnesota State Maine Cato, the financial documents that you used to apply to Minnesota State University Maine Cato, or if you have updated financial documents, bring the most current documents with you. The financial documents will show how you plan to pay for the first year of your education um, in the United States. So that would include the, um, the financial statement for your tuition and fees, your housing, books and supplies, everything that's listed on I-20 under the financial section should match what's on your financial statement or your bank statement. So make sure to bring that with you. You should also bring with you your transcripts from either your high school or university transcripts if you're applying for a master's program. Bring all of your financial, um, or excuse me, academic transcripts with you to the interview. They may look at your academic records, they may not, but it's a good idea just to have them in case. Mm -hmm. Then you will also want to bring with you your, your English proficiency test scores. So if you are required to take the TOEFL or the IELTS or the SAT or the ACT, <laughs> um, any one of the standardized English proficiency tests that we admitted you um, to the university with, you will bring the test results with you. Again, the consular officer might not ask for those, but they also um, they could ask for it. So it's a good idea to have it just in case. Um, then you will also want to bring with you that CVIS fee payment receipt. Mm -hmm. So the $350 payment that you made um, to activate your I-20, you do need to bring that receipt with you to the appointment as well. And that is the summary of documents. Um, so in summary, the I-20, the CVIS fee payment, your financial records or financial documents of how you're paying for the university, the transcripts, the test scores, um, anything else that I mm, had to mention at the moment? No, I was. Oh, yeah. an admission letter. Yeah, yeah great job. <laughs> <laughs> so those that are was, the documents. Yeah, <laughs> that was a lot of information, a lot of awesome mm. information. Thank you. <laughs> I was just going to say, I was um, talking to a student the other day, and he was trying to encourage other students um, who might be coming with just kind of when you go to the visa interview it's you know you might feel really nervous about it it's a very important um, time for you of course but he was really emphasizing um, just being friendly mm -hmm. you know smile try to just have a friendly kind of demeanor mm -hmm. um, that can go a long way when the officers are very rushed and busy and if somebody's nice to them you know how are you doing you know just kind of have that um that lighter rapport mm -hmm. sometimes that can help and then you'll just also want to be prepared with uh information that they might want to know like what um are you planning to do you know what's your your motivation for coming to the u.s and then they want to know if you're planning um or if you have the uh, information or documentation to show that you're planning to go back to your home country. So they want to make sure you have home country, <clears throat> excuse me, ties. So it's important to be ready for that question as well. So other than that, I think, yeah, you mm -hmm. covered everything. Um, and just going off of that too, I think it's a really good idea, mm -hmm. what Stephanie mentioned, to talk about your academic and your professional mm -hmm. goals. Mm -hmm. um, one of the questions they might ask you is why you are choosing to study at Minnesota mm -hmm. State University in yes. yep. over all the other universities in the United mm -hmm. States. Yeah. So it's, good, I, it's a good idea to have um, a rationale why you chose mm -hmm. Minnesota State University right. and why you chose the specific academic major that you are planning to study and how the degree from Minnesota State Mankato will best prepare you for a career back home in your country. Right. So you want to have a very clear answer mm -hmm. about um, those goals and your rationale for choosing Minnesota State University. Um, one thing I forgot to mention with the documents, um, for students who are applying, who are undergraduate students, 
in most cases, you should be receiving the Cultural Contribution Scholarship. And we also send a certificate of that scholarship with your I-20. You can bring that scholarship award letter or award certificate with you to the visa interview. Um, and that can be one of the reasons that you tell them that you chose Minnesota State University. If um, the scholarship impacted your decision to study here, you can certainly talk about that. For any master's students, if you are receiving a scholarship or maybe a teaching assistantship or a graduate assistantship, also bring that letter of support with you as well, because um, that will be good evidence of your reason to choose Minnesota State University, Mankato. But other than that, just um, be relaxed, mm -hmm. be confident. You have good reasons to come to study to, in the US, so go in there confident, mm -hmm. relaxed, Try not to memorize a script <laughs> for the consular <laughs> officer. <laughs> um, it's good to practice the interview with a family member or a yeah. friend beforehand, but um, don't go in with memorized answers. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes that makes the consular officers a little suspicious. If right. you go in and you just have a very specific answer, try to talk naturally mm -hmm. and relax and just be honest with them. Yeah. Um, but again, the, mm -hmm. the top questions that you will get asked is why you are choosing to study at Minnesota State University, yes. why you are choosing that program, how you will pay for your education mm -hmm. in the United States, and what you will do after you graduate. So those are the top four questions that you will get asked. Yes. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Anything else to add to that? I think we've covered okay. that pretty thoroughly for right now. Okay. Yeah. So then we can move on to, uh, should we say arriving, coming to make Sure, here? sure. So um, the airport that you should arrange your flight into is uh, Minneapolis St. Paul uh, International Airport. So the abbreviation for that to make it easier for you is M is in Mr, S is in Sam, P is in Paul. Um, and it's about an hour and a half from the university, very easy drive. We will have students waiting at the airport for you and they'll just, you know, greet you, be excited and um, and also tell you how to get to the shuttle. So there's a really convenient uh, shuttle that runs between uh, the airport and the university and it's called Land to Air. Very nice people on uh, on that shuttle, excited about international students. And so you can take all of your luggage, your 5,000 suitcases, <laughs> well, maybe not that many, um, all on the, the trip. Um, and they operate several times um, a day. If it turns out, if you're living going to live in a residence hall and it turns out that you're going to arrive in town after 10 p.m., it would then be better for you to reserve a, a room in a hotel. And maybe you want to think about that too. If you're going to arrive in Minneapolis late, consider staying in a hotel that night. Please don't take a taxi um, from the airport to the university. It is really expensive. You might think about taking an Uber. Um, but again, arriving late, you have to have a plan just in case uh, you're going to be here later in the evening because mm -hmm. we want you to be safe, have a plan. If you arrive at the university, like I said, very late, there really won't be, you know, a lot of um, places to or a lot of people to just be around to, to help you. So just be prepared in case you do arrive late that you might have to have a little more money to stay in a hotel. Mm -hmm. Um, those of you, yes, living in a residence hall, we will have somebody here who will be able to take you to the residence hall. Um, usually they're just within walking distance of where the shuttle will drop you off at the university. Um, let's see, what else? The, uh, I guess I can talk a bit more about orientation unless there was something more about transportation right now. Um, that's the main those are the main pieces thing yeah yeah mm -hmm. um, and okay so orientation officially uh, undergraduate orientation is going to start on Tuesday January 7th but you are welcome to arrive in town on Monday or the weekend or even you know a couple of weeks before the earliest that students can enter the US is uh, no more than 30 days 
before the start date on your I-20. So try to plan your travels for that so that you don't get to the border and they say, oh no, you're actually 40 days ahead of time. We can't let you, you know, in. So plan your trip accordingly. There will be an opportunity for students who would like to live on campus to arrive earlier in the residence halls. We can tell you more about that um, upcoming, but it's also in the sway or the information that we'll send you or are sending you. Um, so that can be really convenient. A lot of our students live off campus. And so you'll want to review the housing information that we send you. The university has a main website where you can look at the different apartments around town, at least see a list and look online. So orientation, I'll jump back to that. So the main week uh, begins on Tuesday the uh, 7th. And Monday night, however, the 6th of uh, January, we're going to have some time for international students to just spend casual time getting to know each other. Maybe you've you know, been around a little while and would like to meet other students. So that's what that time together will be. And we will have information about that coming up too. But the official check-in date is Tuesday morning on uh, January 7th. So please uh, be prepared to come. Please plan your trip so that you can be there on time. On the afternoon of that day, on Tuesday, we're going to start our presentations. So we just want to make sure that you're available to have all the information that you need to have a successful start. One thing that's really great about orientation is that we have a large team of international students, just like yourself, who have been you know, through what you're going through. They've planned for getting here and all excited and you know, everything is brand new. So we have about 50 mm -hmm. <laughs> international students who are going to be at the ready uh, to help you when you get here. So we have programs throughout the week. Um, I'll mention for graduate students, if you're going to be coming here, um, you can come to an orientation just specifically for you on Friday, January 3rd. And so that will be for you and your fellow graduate students to you know, have a shorter orientation, but still full of information. Because uh, some graduate students have graduate assistantships or teaching assistantships, and their schedule during the main orientation, the week of the 7th, is uh, filled with meetings and preparation for your assistantships and teaching assistantships. So that's why we want to give you an opportunity to come a little bit earlier and, and have time to be with us and then you can attend the regular orientation on the following week as much as you can. We'd love to see you there. So yeah, so orientation for the first check-in date, you'll wanna make sure you bring all of your immigration documents. So your I-20, your passport, your visa will be in your passport. I highly recommend that you also bring your health and health information. So any health history that you have um, some students bring it in a little booklet or a sheet of paper, something that will help our health center to know what immunizations you might have had, or if there's a medical condition that's ongoing for you that would be very helpful for the doctors here to know about. There's also an online um, opportunity with the Student Health Services website to do your immunization information ahead of time and do it online. So that's another option. Um, and insurance, health insurance. So you'll need to purchase health insurance here at the university before you arrive. For the spring and summer semester, it will be, I think it's going to be about 12 or 1200 or so dollars. Plan a little bit. Um, higher just to be on the safe side. But students have to purchase the insurance before you can enroll in classes. And on Wednesday of orientation, you're going to meet with your uh, academic advisors to talk about your major, talk about your program. And then on Thursday, that is our main registration day. So you have to be all done with orientation and paying your insurance so that you can attend that Thursday. So we want to give you as much information as possible. And we know that even now, this is a lot of information for you to be thinking about. 
while you're super excited, there's a lot of things to get done. So please always feel free to contact our office if you need assistance, have questions. And uh, Beth mentioned we'll be back <laughs> as <Yes>. well. Yes. <laughs> Is there absolutely. anything else you would like to say? I would just emphasize that orientation is very important. Mm -hmm. So as you're yeah. booking your flights and yes. your arrival, please make sure to arrive on time mm -hmm. no later um, than that Monday, mm -hmm. January 6th. Yep. Try to arrive by that date. Um, orientation is that full week, the 7th through the 10th, and it's important that you're here. It helps mm -hmm. students who go through orientation are more successful. Yeah. It helps them to adjust to the culture, the climate. Mm -hmm. um, it helps them to meet mm -hmm. other students who are also going through the same orientation and trying to figure out things out for the first time. And it also gives you a chance to meet with mm -hmm. our peer mentors that Stephanie was mentioning, the international students who will be helping and assisting you and guiding you through that week. They are very helpful and have lots of resources and information. Mm -hmm. And students who miss orientation and arrive late tend yeah. to be less successful as they transition to classes. Yeah. Um, you also get the very last pick of your classes to mm. register for, so you might not get into the classes you want to take. Right. So it's really important to arrive on time mm -hmm. um, so that you are successful your first semester. One other thing I want to mention just sure. quickly, um, <laughs> we have a program called Maverick Global Ambassadors. Mm -hmm. They are current international students who are here to help answer any questions you might have mm -hmm. about what it's really like to be an international student in Mankato, um, as well as any other questions you might have about academic information, um, visa appointments. Mm -hmm. They have gone through this process and they are current students here and would love to reach out mm -hmm. to you. So you've been hopefully getting emails from uh, about our Maverick Global Ambassador program. So please visit the website and reach out to them. They are a resource for you. Yeah. So I think <laughs> right. that is all the information that we have for today. Um, if you do have some questions in the next couple minutes, please feel free to use the chat box to submit any questions that you might have. Um, but otherwise, this concludes our live webinar for this week. Um, we plan to have another live webinar within the next uh, two weeks, hopefully. Um, if you follow U.S. holidays, the university does have a holiday, or the U.S. has a holiday coming up next week called Thanksgiving. Yeah. So the university will be closed next week on Thursday and Friday. So we will not be here. Um, but the following week, we will be open. Thank you all for, yeah, for attending you. our live session. We look forward <laughs> to hopefully seeing you in January. Yeah. And we will let you know when the next live session is scheduled. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Have a great weekend, everyone.